the rolling bin. It's a tool with so many different uses and applications like rolling up dough and well, that's, that's genuinely the extent of its use. However, what if I decided to break that mold and tradition? What if I wanted to be a revolutionary? What if I betrayed everything our grandmothers taught us and used a rolling pin for something other than flattening yeast and flour against the cutting board she bought back in 55? What if I used a rolling pin? For violence. Well, that's exactly what I did. I wanted to become the perfect mix of Julia Child and the Grim Fucking Reaper. So I sat there and thought to myself for a moment, what game would allow me to do this? What game would not only give me access to a rolling pin to use at my own discretion, and also allow me to use it for my own blood satiating needs? Well, Fallout 4 was my first thought. Not only do you have access to a rolling pin, but there's also a plethora of different melee skill and perk combinations available to me that would make the run a breeze. But then I remembered, I fucking hate Fallout 4. I don't know what it is about the game. I hate the way it looks, I hate the way the NPCs talk, I hate the way the story flows, and I abhor the combat. So, at least for me, that wouldn't be an option. Now, the obvious next choice would be Fallout 3, if the game could actually start on my goddamn PC. However, Bethesda, in their infinite wisdom, decided that they want to sell a 15-year-old game for $20 when it won't even launch off of Steam without an external mod installed. Fuck you, Bethesda, and fuck all of your games, too. So, it being the very last option I have, I chose Fallout New Vegas for this run. It has everything I need, including a rolling pin and that's basically all I need, because it's all I'm allowed to really use. I began the run like any other, I listened to the man with the sultry voice give me a rundown on New Vegas and its current affairs, then was immediately domed by Benny, and not in the good way. I magically woke up in Doc Mitchell's house after ingesting more lead than a child at a gas pump in the 1960s, stole everything in his house that wasn't nailed down, pumped all my special points into strength, then immediately made a beeline to Novak without talking to a single person. Now the reason I took this straight shot of the dinosaur town is because if you break into Cliff Briscoe's bungalow and make your way over to his fridge, you can find Find your very own rolling pin on top of his freezer. Fun fact, this is the only set spawn for this weapon in the entire game. Every other rolling pin acquired in Fallout Vegas is either found in a metal box or dropped by certain enemies that can spawn with them. And you may be asking yourself, in a game like Fallout New Vegas where the player has the ability to choose any build or weapon they could possibly want to use, why is there only a single place where the rolling pin can spawn? Well that's because the rolling pin has the lowest damage of any weapon in the entire Fallout franchise, and is referred to by many as a joke weapon that is not meant to actually be used. I didn't truly understand the scope of how horrible this weapon was when I first started this run. For example, I don't know the exact thought process of the developers on this, but somehow the boxing tape, which is literally just a piece of cloth wrapped around your fists, somehow does more damage than a piece of solid oak being swung around like a sword. And before some of you fucking Fallout nerds comment, yes, I know the boxing gloves technically do less damage, but these aren't meant to actually be a weapon and kill enemies. They're more of a tool used to inflict fatigue on the foes, which is why they do almost zero damage but proc fatigue more than any other equipable in the entire game. Well, enough talking about stats and other nerd shit, let's see how this weapon actually performs in game. There's a small gaggle of Viper gang members members camping on your Novak, so I decided to use them as a first test run of my new weapon. So let's just head over there and get close enough to use this wannabe wooden club. Oh, that's a grenade launcher. Oh, you're shooting at me, and I'm dead. Okay, let's try this one more time. Alrighty, so this time I was able to get close enough for them to put away their shotguns and grenade launchers, and uh, wow, this is bad. This is really, really, really bad. So there's three vipers here, and it took me a minute and a half to kill the weakest one that has no armor on. But for the moment, I was alive and the rolling pin was still swinging, so I can't complain. I continued on to the next one that was a little bit weaker than the leader, and it took me two and a half minutes to kill them because they were wearing armor, and this weapon has almost no effect on any enemies wearing gear that has a damage threshold over five. With both of the other enemies dead, I focused my attention on the viper leader, and after about two more minutes, I had whittled him down to half health and was pretty confident about killing him. Oh, just fucking kidding, the rolling pin broke mid-fight. <laughs> what, what should I do? <laughs> if I start running, will he leave me alone? Oh, no, he's, he's just fucking following me. Oof. Oh, oh shit, I didn't know they can go into buildings. That scared the shit out of me. Oh my god. At one point, I even tried stripping, thinking that for some reason it would make me fast enough to outrun him. But again, that did not work. I kept running and eventually I turned around and he, he was just on fire. I'm, I'll take it. I made a quick pit stop at the NCR training post to get my rolling pin repaired, and then made another beeline straight to New Vegas so I could get this goddamn run over with as fast as possible. I entered Freeside and was almost immediately jumped by a thug. This is probably the one and only time in the game that I actually felt powerful, killing the unarmed and unarmored bandit that was trying to run away from me. But, you know, the game marked him as an enemy and XP is XP. I ended up leveling off of beating that surrendered man's skull in with my rolling pin, and continued to pump all of my levels into melee weapons, that way my pin's damage can go from 3 to 5. We're really moving up in the world. I made my way 
over to the king's hideout and order to do the king's quest line so I can gain free access to the strip. He ordered me to hire a bodyguard that escorts you through Freeside and prove that he's a scammer. Once I did that, he had me investigate rumors that the NCR was handing out free food to NCR members in the city and denying it to other residents, which I did because it's a quest line and I don't really have another fucking choice. To actually begin this quest, you're supposed to talk to Pacer and he'll order you to kill the remaining soldiers at the encampment. However, I walked around for about 15 minutes trying to find this fucker and for some reason, I just couldn't. He's supposed to be hiding around the corner from where the NCR soldiers are, but for some reason, he just found himself inside the middle of an inaccessible apartment complex, meaning that we are only an hour into this run and I already have to turn to no clip in order to continue after encountering this game breaking bug. Once I had talked to Pacer, I was instructed to kill all remaining NCR soldiers, which I had no fucking clue as to how I would accomplish that. My dumbass somehow thought I could sneak up on the six people looking directly in my direction. To no one's surprise, I was immediately detected and tried my best to avoid the bullets from the NCR firing squad lined up behind me. I fled inside a nearby building thinking that the enemies would follow me inside and I would be able to fight them one on one up close. However, they never entered the building. I then looked to my left and saw that there was a mattress lying on the floor next to the door, and I had one of the smartest ideas I ever came up with my entire life. You see, in the Fallout franchise, if you find a mattress and there's no enemies in your current area, you're able to sleep on it for as little as an hour and wake up with full health and AP. Meaning that I could exit through the door, slowly damage each enemy outside, re-enter the building when I was close to death, and then repeat until all of the enemies had died. I slept through that fight until there was only the leader of the NCR encampment left, I tanked her bullets and just rolling pinned her into the fucking dirt. I then returned to the king with the news that the NCR and Freeside had been defeated. With that done, I cashed in the favor the king owed me and went to Macon Ralph's to receive my free passport into New Vegas, because the true capitalist in me would always rather take human life in order to receive a free pass rather than pay a few thousand caps to get in. As soon as I entered New Vegas, I went straight to Mr. House because in my opinion, if you do it right, the house ending is arguably the fastest way to complete the game, and when you're using a rolling pin, you really don't feel like spending extra time in the Mojave Desert. After I was done with Mr. House, I made my way to the tops to confront Benny. I didn't feel like going all the way to Caesar's Legion to try and get the platinum ship after they kidnapped Benny, meaning I had to either kill him here or risk having to fight my way through Caesar's entire encampment. I stole his room key, found Yes Man, then showed the evidence to the bouncer at the door so the top's employees wouldn't attack me when I tried to kill Benny. I wasn't exactly sure what the plan of action should be in the situation, so I planned to just walk straight up to Benny and beat him with my rolling pin. That sounded more sexual than I wanted it to be. Not, I didn't mean it like that. I started preparing myself for an obnoxious battle of having to run around the tops, healing and hiding away from Benny's goons, but as soon as I hit him, I realized something was off. Not a single person moved, not even Benny himself. I just started beating on him with my pin over and over again until he folded. God, why does that sound so sexual? Once Benny's guards were done just staring at me while I murdered their boss, I grabbed the platinum chip and made my way over to Mr. House. He sent me down to the basement and showed me all his cool new Securitrons, like your seven-year-old cousin showing off his toys after Christmas. When you side with Mr. House and give him the platinum chip, you're initially sent off to Fortification Hill, where Caesar's Legion resides to power up a secret bunker underneath that fort. That would then awaken thousands of dormant Securitrons that Mr. House needs to take over the dam later in the game. There's one quick roadblock though. When you first enter the fort, you're frisked and they steal the platinum chip off of you. I got it back pretty easily though. If you just tell Caesar you'll help him, he'll immediately hand over the most valuable piece of technology in all of the Mojave Desert for free. I made my way into the secret bunker to activate the dormant Securitrons. The bunker is filled with aggro turrets and robots. For a second or two, I tried my best to actually fight through the bunker, but I quickly realized that there were quite literally too many enemies for me to kill and heal out of. The math just ain't gonna math. Meaning that I just ran my way past almost every single enemy in the bunker. Now, technically, that isn't damaging the run because I didn't use anything other than a rolling pin, and I just, in general, I'm not good at video games, so this is really my only resort. There isn't a single corridor in this bunker that doesn't have either a robot or a sentry turret, meaning I'm gonna have to master a single line from the entrance to the control room and back to the exit. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention that at this point in the game, I don't have a single snip back, because... I'm a fucking idiot. It took me a couple of tries and a lot of anger, but eventually I was able to serpentine my way through the turret barrage and juke my way around the robots and make my way to the exit, meaning I had one of the two substations powered up and made my way back to house. After you boot up the first substation, Mr. House sends you off to deal with all of the major clans in the Mojave, the Boomers, Brotherhood of Steel, NCR, and for some reason the fucking Omertas, which is just a casino family on the strip. I don't know, I just do what he tells me. I made my way over to the Boomers and feigned interest in order to get in the room alone with one of their two leaders. When we had some alone time, I beat the old woman to death in her bathroom with a rolling pin, then made my way over to the nearby hangar, and also beat the old man to death with a rolling pin. I never said it was morally correct, but boy is it much faster than having to do their full quest line. Once that was over with, I made my way back to the Omertas and blackmailed Kachino into betraying his bosses and helping me overthrow the casino. I learned that the bosses were secretly selling guns on the strip and had to find a way to stop this before I was able to continue the quest line. So I went down to the basement to talk to the guy in charge of these weapons. I learned that he was indebted to the owners because they had a hollow tape revealing, let me get my notes out here. 
that he in fact went into a drug-induced rage and beat a prostitute to death in a bathroom. Holy fuck, that's crazy. Alrighty then. I talked to one of the bosses and paid off his debt, meaning that he gave me access to the safe room where they kept all their guns they were selling, which allowed me to blow them all up with thermite. With that over, everything was set up for me and Katrina to face the bosses. Unfortunately, when you enter casinos in the strip, they frisk you and take all of your weapons away until you leave. As a way to avert this mechanic, when you face the owners, Katrina gives you your own pistol to help him gun them down. I obviously can't fucking use it, so I sat back and decided to see if Katrina could kill them both himself. He, uh... He, he couldn't. Now there's the obvious rule that I myself can't use anything other than a rolling pin, but there's nothing saying I can't body block Kachino and take all of the damage for him while he kills both of the owners for me, which coincidentally is exactly what I did. Omerta's down onto the Brotherhood of Steel. I found my way into their very hidden bunker that sticks 10 feet out of the ground and met with their leader McNamara, whose name coincides with everyone's favorite Secretary of Defense who is almost solely responsible for the escalation of the war in Vietnam. What an amazing namesake. I really don't know what the goals of the Brotherhood of Steel are, but as soon as they met me they stripped me down to my underwear and placed a bomb collar on my neck, which sounds like a fucking awesome Saturday night. Anyway, McNamara instructed me that he wouldn't take the collar off until I dealt with the NCR soldier scouting outside the Brotherhood bunker. I made my way over to the ranger and beat him to death very, very, very slowly with my rolling pin. It was honestly just an awkward amount of time I was beating on him. But eventually, he succumbed and I returned to McNamara. Once I proved myself for the Brotherhood, they removed my collar and I immediately pickpocketed all of the key cards off the leaders in order to set off the self-destruct sequence. I set it off and made a beeline for the exit. Now, technically, could you say this is failing the run because I died to something other than a rolling pin? I mean, you could argue that it was, but also, who the fuck installs a self-destruct sequence where you live? I returned to house for what felt like the 40th time this run and was yet again immediately redirected to a different location, this time being sent off to the NCR substation to redirect more power to Mr. House and his Securitrons. I immediately just walked in and left without anyone batting an eye. And with that, we have gotten to the final mission of New Vegas in three hours with just a rolling pin. However, you can probably tell by the multiple minutes left in this video that I did not in fact finish the game in the remaining 20 minutes it takes to complete that level. You see, when you rush through every single main mission in the game, do no side quests, and are forced to use a rolling pin for every altercation, you end up not really racking up a whole lot of experience. Which means I went into the fight against the Legate as a level 9 dumbass with less than 200 health, no stim packs, and a fucking rolling pin resulting in me having to load back to the point just before you start the final mission. To gain some quick levels, I went into the Ultra Lux and killed every worker there because no one in the casino was armed with guns, making eliminating them an absolute breeze. I talked to the receptionist there, who for some reason isn't mad at me for killing all his co-workers, and he instructed me that he needed human flesh for the main course at the banquet that night. So I, being the XP gremlin that I was, went over to a poor man living in a shack, put him in a sleeper hold, and stuffed him in a dumpster so that I could kidnap him and eat him later. With that done, I just went around the strip doing odd quests and tasks. I did some talent scouting for the tops, I did the entire Crimson Caravan questline, I even did Cass's companion questline, but I couldn't even take her as a companion because that's not fair to the run. Then I cleared out the entire highway of enemies for the NCR outpost, then thought that maybe I was a high enough level to do the Old World Blues DLC for some quick experience. I very much fucking wasn't. I loaded back to my save before I went into the DLC and continued doing odd and end quests in order to level up. This time doing the Rex companion quest for the king. I then dismissed Rex because, yet again, I can't use a fucking companion. Then I went around the outskirts of Freeside just killing any and all gaggles of gang members I could find to pick up the extra XP. By the time I cleared out all the enemies in my area, I felt as though I was high enough level to finally take on the dam. Now before you all nitpicky assholes comment, yes I know it is kind of cheaty to let the Securitrons help me clear out the bridge, but having help on the bridge to the dam is inevitable no matter what ending you choose. If you pick the NCR, you get a bunch of rangers. If you pick the Legion, you get a bunch of Centurions. And if you pick Yes Man or House, you get the Securitrons. I continued across the dam, killing the legionaries that I was physically able to kill with a rolling pin, and went inside the dam to install the override chip and flip the third power switch. I ran right on past the two NCR members in power armor, because how the fuck do you expect me to kill them with a piece of wood? After that, I exited back to the top of the dam, where the Securitrons and I did our best to clear out the remaining Centurions. I continued forward to the end of the dam, where Lanius had set up his encampment and ran straight to him. That stat I was pumping as I did my level run earlier was speech, because conveniently enough, if you have a maxed out speech level of 100 when you first confront the legate, you're actually able to completely avoid the fight and convince him to pull his troops back. Is this a bit lame? Yeah. But I want you guys to keep in mind that even with a maxed out melee weapon stat and all of the melee oriented perks taken, the rolling pin still only did 11 damage, and the legate with his armor has a damage threshold of 19. Using some quick math and formula calculations you can find on the wiki, my rolling pin does about 1 damage against the legate. He has 900 health. The rolling pin only has 475 attacks before it breaks. He quite literally has more health than damage I can deal with a single use of my rolling pin. Oh, what's that? You said Nurbit figured out a way to do it? He's just a better gamer than me? Well, if I had to say, I think he has a bit more fucking experience in this game than I do. Go fuck yourself. I made my way down to the bottom of the camp where I killed General Oliver with my rolling pin. 
well, attempted to kill General Oliver with my rolling pin, and then told House the strip was his to cap off the end of the run. So, can you beat Fallout New Vegas with just a rolling pin? Yeah, you can. Though, a more apt title would be, can you run away from most encounters and only use a rolling pin when completely necessary. However, we got it done, and if you already made it this far, you might as well subscribe. Like, dude, you just watched 15 minutes of me making shitty jokes and playing like a fucking dumbass. You might as well stick around for my next video as well. Hope you guys have an amazing night, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.